seen Daddy in a face. Welcome everyone to Seeing Daddy Interviews. My name is Ian and I am very excited because on the phone right now we have the one, the only Ricky Armolino from Hawk. Ricky, how are you doing today, man? I've never I've never been introduced like that before and I'm gonna have to unpack <laughs> I'm gonna have to unpack that for a second. I'll give you a few minutes. The o- the only one? The, yeah, well, I don't know a whole lot of Ricky Armolinos. Well, I killed the other one. Okay. I've I've I always suspected there was more. It wasn't like the Jet Li movie, <laughs> The One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we, you're the most powerful one there is. We met on a um, on a plateau that, that cherry blossoms were growing on. <laughs> <laughs> and then right now, you're the last one in this hell realm, making your yeah. way up and fighting on a huge mountaintop. <laughs> okay, I get it. Look, we already are making references that most people won't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's great. So <laughs> They just got to follow along. Yeah, exactly. We're going to go off on so many tangents, I'm sure. But so right now, you're on that big tour with Ice Nine Kills from Ashes to New, Afterlife, Palisades, obviously Hawk. So how's that been going for you, man? It's, I mean, it's a different tour than any tour I've ever done before because I'm simultaneously in two bands. Right. So that's interesting. Um, so I can get yelled at about twice the stuff. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's actually wonderful. Um, so uh, yeah, no, this tour it's it's so, like mo- more nights have sold out than not, which right. is which is weird, you know, because <laughs> like I, I you know it's like y- y- it's music's a funny business because if you're if if you're on a, if you're like always honest, you can always defer blame or defer victory to other people. Be like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, the tour did good, but. It was, you know, good lineup, but so I'm on two fifths of the lineup now. So I, I can take two fifths of the victory and that's more than usual. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to ask you, first of all, congrats, obviously, but then Thanks. who else would be yelling? Like I can understand Spencer's yelling at you for ice nine kills, but are you yelling at yourself for Hawk? Oh, wait, wait. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, myself. yeah. Um, <laughs> actually pretty frequently. Okay. All right. I have a little routine in the morning. Just to get you I take my up shirt already. off and I stare in the mirror and I just look at all my flaws for a while <laughs> and then I just make eye contact with myself and I shake my head with a with a just a very angry expression. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is very Bad. very horror movie esque, if you ask Go, me. And I guess that does. Yeah, fit. there's been a lot of there's been a lot of that on the story. Play horror movie trivia with the VIP people. That's pretty fun. I was actually going to ask, how does that go? So the tour you're on right now isn't coming near Boston or you know that part of the East Coast. So no, the falling in reverse tour is exactly. I, and, and you already have your answer of why it's not coming to Boston was because we we have radius clauses on those markets. And, exactly. You know, we're, we knew we were doing the falling in reverse tour. So this one was great because it's kind of set up around a lot of unique markets and i'm not saying that in any type of pedantic or you know condescending way like right. yeah. we're in johnson city uh, uh tonight and and honestly these markets are fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> like this is my shit i we played a couple like smaller club shows yeah where there's no barricade and i'm like able to just like jump on it but like i we played in um i think it was oklahoma city no no it was omaha nebraska oh yeah, um, yeah. i lived there and, yeah I swear to God, I spent half a hawk set just like crowd surfing. Nice, <laughs> it's like you know running my feet along the ceiling and stuff. So, oh yeah. So, um, I fr- what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know since the VIP isn't coming here, how is that horror trivia actually gone? Oh, it's fun. I mean, I don't watch a lot of horror movies, so generally, like you know, when I go out and pick my team and you know give out my high fives, I'm usually like, uh. Do you guys watch like Jason or any of that shit? <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine it would be very similar to that. So yeah, man, I, that's that's I awesome. Spend, I spent my time watching documentaries. Oh, uh, well, I would have pegged you as that kind of person. That is yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I had this like weird anxiety for a while where it was always like, I couldn't watch anything like simple. Like I don't not to say horror movies are simple. I actually oh, I understand yeah. I understand the art of them now that I've been in Ice Nine for a while because it's like, oh, 
it's a genre based on like paying homage to all the previous stuff and like and and there's actually a lot of creativity built into like how they um they're, they're like low budget movies that they kind of make larger than life through through you know like really creative methods and yeah. and, and the gurus are, like i and now i get it but before i was in ice nine kills i didn't give a fuck about freddy right you know yep i don't care that makes it's just sense. like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I just thought if people watch it just because they they like a little scare every now and then mm -hmm. but now i get there's actually like a whole culture to it and oh it's yeah fucking tight yep. but dude i don't even i haven't even seen any new star wars not to say that that's like some sort of litmus test but like sure i just don't watch a lot of things i for some reason i have to watch walking dead that's really? like okay that's my stupid you know <laughs> Like other people got like Grey's Anatomy or whatever. I got that. Um, <laughs> so I, I will watch that the moment that it's released on Sundays and that's over. And I got Attack on Titan coming up. Uh, I, love. I love that. I love that so much. That's for sure one of my go-tos. Oh, God, yeah. It's great. It's like a teen, teen drama mixed with like a war drama mixed with like a revenge drama. Yeah, story. It's it's. It, 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 I read the mangas. Oh the yeah, story, yeah, it just keeps getting more and more whacked out. But the guy writing it's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, I th I, I kind of thought he was losing like for a little while. There's like yeah. once the whole plot line starts going a little haywire at first, like where there's like you know like the, the I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but sure. there's like the bloodline and like there's like some royalty shit that starts coming out. I was like, yep. okay, this is turning into nonsense. <laughs> and it got pulled together in a way where I was really impressed. Yeah. I was like, oh, they had a plan. Yeah. Exactly. So it, like, like basically the whole story is based on a couple scenes and you just keep learning more details of what was going on off camera. Right. And it like, it, it's crazy. It's great. Yeah. Great storytelling. I've never read anything or seen anything where so many main characters die. Oh yeah, so many, and that yeah. that's incredible for me. Yeah, well, they 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 like I I really like what they did in the beginning where they like make a whole like you know chummy cast of like let's go get it guys and yep. then they kill half of them. Yeah, they're just gone. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's pretty horrific. Oh, it really is. <laughs> but but like all all those characters like still have a role in the story like even like now like it's right. really weird like they keep going back to earlier events and you learn what this guy was all about or whatever i i, I um i like storytelling yes. I, I think that right. storytelling has a really big part in in like music too and oh, stuff sure. because i think bands are kind of like their own weird like it's like a really weird show you know what i mean right. where there's like there's there's characters and there's plot lines so i like i sit around the bus and i try to i try to make like plot like more like plot points for everybody so their character becomes more like believable for the okay. story so i always like try to write a backstory for the characters so i've been working on spencer for my side <laughs> and the one thing is uh, what i think makes his story his character funnier yeah is um he doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to give hugs right so he either always squeezes like too hard or, or not hard enough sure um and then i for myself i, I like the idea that my character uh, can't read cursive but <laughs> but has like an english degree somehow and so like i can't let anybody know right so like every time like i need i, I don't know what something says like i like point at him like Man, what do you think of this shit huh <laughs> like, <laughs> Honestly, I hope that the entire Hawk album is this. Yes. That's what I want. That's what I want. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like coming up with a put like I'm literally like I'm brainstorming what I want the next song to be about. Yeah. And because uh, we have a whole full length, but we're just going to do we're going to do singles in the okay. meantime. Listen, we can just make stuff and put it out. Like once you do it once, you're not going back. You know what ah, I mean? Because you're see. like, I could release this shit that we finished four years ago, or I could just make another song. And right, there's like, right. and once somebody offers us money for a record, sure, take it, put it out. Ah, but I like, see. okay, yeah, no, we were talking about ideas for the song, and there was like, my one idea, I was talking to my manager, I was like, I think I want to make a song about dating in my 30s, because it's <laughs> like, because clearly by this time, me and whoever I'm gonna go on a date with, we're both. Mo like the common denominator for all the problems in our life and why nothing worked out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got two of the worst possibilities getting together because obviously you've both failed for years and years and years. Yeah, yeah. There's kind of like, hey, we clearly aren't good at this. Yeah.
There's something depressingly beautiful about that. Yeah, or like, and the girl on the other end of the table is like, no, my husband died. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> why now, mad at this? Yeah, if you had laughed like I just did, then yeah. that would have made that moment obviously go even better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. No, hey, I think we can do like Scene Daddy's interviews colon dating in the scene. And we'll just follow you around and we'll just talk about your dating in your 30s. Yeah, me fr- me frothing at the mouth explaining how like Warp Tour it was like we were all getting to bed at 2 a.m., getting up at 8 a.m. We obviously <laughs> had discipline, had a bunch of crazy motherfuckers with face tattoos. There are a thousand of us. We were building a whole entire city every single day and wiring the whole fucking thing. If we could have got our hands on like 80 assault rifles or something like that. We could have started making some <laughs> dem- demands. And then, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'm just be like, oh, you have to go home already? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I would assume the woman would first go, what's Warp Tour? <laughs> be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they'll be like, do you just play shows for like 17 year olds? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and occasionally really eccentric adults. Yeah. And that's why you can't date people that come to your concerts. I, 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 you know, it's so weird. It was like, I actually felt that way in like my mid to late twenties was mm-hmm. like, what am I doing? And because no one, God, I hope none of my friends hear this, but <laughs> no one is more pedantic and condescending than your recently married, recently just had kids, friends in oh, their late twenties yeah. who are like, uh-huh. oh, man, just wait till you're trying to put your first down and man, it's going to really change stuff for you, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you make it through those years and you're in your early 30s and you're still doing entertainment, and and I think the thing is, I think for a while, like a lot of my friends were just kind of worried about me because they weren't seeing, they weren't seeing the result. Like, you know, your friends are always going to act in a way that's protective of you. And, you know, so be like, come on, man. (laughs) Like nobody was like, come on, man, get a job. But like, you know, I had friends who sometimes talk to me in a way that, they would talk to me in a way that was like indicative that it's like, so what are you doing, man? <laughs> right. But, right. um, but once you make it through that, everybody goes back to thinking what you're doing is super cool. Ah, like, there you go. Yeah. You know, my friends from high school come out to shows every now and then and they're just like, this is awesome. <laughs> Cause it's like, <laughs> you know, settling down is kind of lost. You know, the honeymoon phase is over. Right. You know, Ian, right. I got to help my band stack something real quick. So no, do it. Um, give me, give me one second. I'm putting you on hold. Not a problem, man. All right, I'm back. I just didn't want to get yelled at. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> As a vocalist, you have to do something every once in a while. Yeah, t- touring is like, it's a lot easier if you just always act in a way where you don't get yelled at. Yes, I'd imagine <laughs> so. And it goes back to what you said before, where you've got two bands now that you have to yeah, worry yeah. about that with. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. By the way, let's, let's talk about that just a little bit. So sure. how did that even start? Because I, the last time I saw you live, you were with Ice Nine Kills. Yes, yes, yes. You're playing rhythm guitar. You're also basically like co-lead vocals as well. Like you're doing a shit ton with Ice Nine yeah. Kills, plus now doing Hawk. So how'd you end up getting wrapped up in all of that? Well, I was in, um, it's funny, I was coming home from a bachelor party, so seg- segue into my next joke. Very uh, nice. Very but, nice. So I was coming home from a bachelor party. I didn't even do anything cool. I was mostly sober. Uh, my best friend asked me, just make sure we don't go to a strip club because I was the best <laughs> man. I was in charge. Okay. Have you ever hung out with a gr- group of adult men whining about the fact they're not at a strip club? Yes. Because yeah, it happens at well every bachelor party. Yeah. Mainline NyQuil. Right. So I'm like trying to keep everybody entertained, like making burritos for everybody because <laughs> little fact between you and me, I can make a really good burrito. Fuck yeah. Nice. You want to you know what the trick is? <laughs> what is it? I don't know what it is, but I just put a little miracle whip in the fucking thing. Wow. I don't, I, I, dude, I don't know what it, I think it's just like close enough to Mexican crema. If you like ah, put sure. a little lion juice on it and like okay. some cotilla cheese or whatever, that and people think that you like just made something good. And like, <laughs> no, I just made rice and you know, season the shit out of the meat with like, That's awesome. or, or tofu or whatever. Sure. Um, but, but I think it's, it's that. That uh, <laughs> that miracle whip. It's that miracle. 
<laughs> so anyway, I'm going to get to what you're asking me about. No but worries, anyway, man. So no worries. I'm going to talk about these burritos for another 18 Please. minutes. But no, so we're driving home and we, we all stop at this diner mm-hmm. and like seven of us got, no, I think it was five, five of us got extreme food poisoning like Whoa. sometime midday so um that was around the time there was this flu that was killing people so i wasn't gonna f- i wasn't fucking around right and i went uh so i go to is to urgent care and i get a phone call from spencer and uh from ice nine kills singer yeah. and I'm, I'm like i assume it's about the album because i was kind of like he facetimed me a bunch of times uh, like and we would like go over some of the courses i'd give some suggestions and sure he just like it was it was a good situation for him because whenever he needed to demo an idea he was working on he would just facetime me and he would sing me the idea you know oh, okay. da, 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 da. and I, I would sing it into my mic and then and then i would grab a guitar and just record like you know a thing behind it yeah. and so he would watch me do it and i remember he was like he was just talking to me about like oh wow you're a really good guitar player I'm like no i'm not i'm just <laughs> I just re-record guitars for so many clients that like sure. I can kind of hack my way through some stuff now. Um, he's like, and you, why are you harmonizing, Gray? I'm like, no, I just <laughs> have to harmonize so many recordings because I don't feel like recording the singers. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, it's just easier when you know what you're looking for and you can sure. just hear it in your head and be like, yeah, that's the one, rather than like making somebody do it again and again and blow their voice out. Right, right. You know, waste more hours of their time. So, um, so he calls me. I'm, I'm like in the urgent care. I got an IV in my arm. I'm like, what does he want? <laughs> so I'm assuming he wants to do more FaceTime sessions. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? And he was just like, hey, uh, can uh, would, would you be able to do a tour? And I'm like, when? He's like, in three days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep in mind, I've been off the map for a while. So. Right. You know, there's a little discussion back and forth. I said no at first, and then um, JD, their guitar player, called me and he, you know, gave me a pretty heartfelt please. Oh, and nice. um, I, as you'd have it, I check with the band I'm supposed to record the next month, and they just casually let me know that they're like, "Oh, we're probably just we're supposed to do a full length," oh. which I don't know if you multiply the number uh, the the number that uh, that you're going to make per song multiply yeah. that per 10 exactly right times 10 it's a lot different than when they're like you know we think we're just going to do a song or two and i've cleared a whole month exactly which right. i mean like it was like oh never mind i'm going on tour yeah so i took the tour with ice nine and um because they offered me you know they offered me money yeah um, right to do it too like they were like we'll pay you you know make sure you're taken care of. And, there you go. And I really thought I was just going to do two weeks. Right. And um, it was like four days in. I told the dudes, like, call off your next dude. I'm saying. It's ah, just fucking awesome. Like, I didn't nice. even, you know, it's like I'd been out the game so long. I'd lost all concept of what it was going to be like. Right. And when I was finally out, like, I'm all of a sudden in all these social situations. And at first, it was pretty nerve wracking. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Um, once I kind of, found my self-worth or whatever you know in that situation be like oh no i think i think i am bringing something to the table i i started um i started really like i i'd go rock climbing whenever i could find a place I'd, yeah. I'd find like the best food for everybody i was just trying to have as much fun as possible and um and the band like you know they, they had done like 12 years of touring as that four piece and oh, they yeah. were like pretty i don't want to say like <laughs> They needed therapy, but like, <laughs> dude, like people would be talking to me, like, be like, dude, I, I haven't had fun doing this in years, and you're the first happy person I've been around. It was uh, like, you all okay. need therapy. No, but <laughs> like, I be, I ended up individually with every single dude. I just ended up like becoming really close with each of them. Good. And I, I, then I got hit up and asked to do Warp Tour, and I'm like, uh, okay. And yep. then I got hit, and then I was told like when the Treyu Tour was, yep. and I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, now I'm here, and it's like, oh, I guess this is a thing. Like I, I you know, I just kind of showed up to help out and I, 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 um, you know, out of respect for my band and a respect for them, like, you know, they've invited me to be in promos and stuff. And I've always been like, nah, you guys look fine. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's so like, it's such a casual atmosphere that it's just kind of like, like, I don't know. Uh, I, I think Spencer's a genius. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I think he's, uh, I would never, ever feel the need to interject a fucking lick 
into any of their business unless I was asked to, because frankly, I think Spencer knows what their fans want. I think he's, he's an expert at it. And, um, and it's just, it, I'm, I'm learning. So like, it's really cool to be here. Cause like, clearly, you know, I'm sure some people can look at the Hawk stuff and be like, Oh yeah, he definitely learned some shit from ice nine kills, but it's like, yeah, like these guys are out here to entertain people and it's awesome. Yeah. So let's, and I'm going to work off a lot of what you just said, but for yeah, sure, yeah, sorry. Oh no, sorry no, that, that was awesome. No, no, that's absolutely great. So did Spencer actually, when he initially reached out, had he worked with you before? Like, where was the connection that he knew? Because obviously you have... We toured with Ice Nine Kills a long time yeah. ago, but what happened right. was I took... Uh, I was recording Carousel Kings. Yes. I was okay. in the early stages of helping them write their record that they were uh, working on for Victory. Yep. And um, their singer was just like, hey, man, do you want to uh, tour manage us for an Ice Nine Kills tour? Ah. And you know, he was just too polite to ask me to do merch. Cause it was like, <laughs> Oh, you know, like Ricky's, you know, but so I went out and, um, and, and the thing is I toured with ice nine kills before. So, yeah, right. you know, JD was JD and Spencer were the most like recognizable guys for me, but you know, everybody was like, Oh shit, what's up, man. Sure. And I remember me and Spencer going out to grab some, um, when, well, the band was drinking. I don't really drink. I, right. I just, you know, I was there when he, when they were grabbing drinks. So sure. I was like, you know, we were in a social atmosphere and, and he let me know how demanding the writing process for the record was. And they kept taking tours and they were, they were trying to, uh, get some, uh, get some more demos together so they mm -hmm. could figure out when they're going to go through Falk. So he was just like, dude, I'm working with JD like 10 hours a day. And he wanted to do a second session in the evening during ah. the days he was in, uh, he was out in, uh, Syracuse. Um, not Syracuse. Yeah. Was it? Was it okay. Rochester? Where? Yeah, wherever he was. Sure. Um, no, like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, of course, you know, it's bigger than the stuff I work on. So I was like, yeah, man, I'll fucking, I'll fucking demo some shit with you over FaceTime. We'll, we'll, we'll do some stuff. Ah, I see. And of course, I'm just like trying to like fucking get anybody to notice that I can produce stuff. Um, because when you work on, you know, I do, I do good. Yeah. But oh yeah, I do good as in everybody in Lancaster knows that I can help them write and produce. Right. right so right. that does not extend to national touring bands. Ah, uh, I see. Um, okay. So so any opportunity I can to like help somebody out with something, I'll fucking pounce on that. Right. So um, that's where the connection came from. Okay. All right. So basically, and let's let everyone know. I mean, so the name of your studio or your name of your production is. RickArmelino.com. Just like that. Yeah, RickArmelino.com. Rick yeah. I haven't, I never gave a name for it. Maybe I should have. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because look, I've known, obviously, I've known your career because I followed you from the beginning of Tota all the way to, you know, all the features you've done. I've had bands on the show on a previous show that worked with you, like Wither Away, I Hate Heroes. Obviously, you mentioned Carousel Kings, but the list goes on and on of like yeah. really, really great bands that you've worked with so you should well, be getting even more people you know i would do it less if i wasn't trying to like build a, a bigger thing right. but it's like gear is man gear is so expensive it's crazy yes. right so like you know i i really i started in the game late i'm 32 now so mm -hmm. um you know that's still in the grand scheme of things i think now since, since the economy like fucking tanks right i think that uh I think 32 has gone back to being like 24 or something like that. Like, For sure. I yeah. forget. They, they like redacted yeah. ages, I think. <laughs> uh, 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 but, um, but yeah, no. So, so I didn't, man, I couldn't do any of this stuff when I, until like I was 25, I just started like trying to figure out how to do stuff on my laptop and yeah. keep in mind, I couldn't sing unless a producer coached me through every single take. I couldn't, I knew very little about music. I, I was, pretty i was in a pretty bad position um to where like i think if i met a 25 year old who yeah. was where i was at at the time like you know i would have been like uh i would use your you know whatever currency you've generated through touring for like i don't know getting into like management or trying to work sure. at a label or something like you know one of those positions but um and even like my my 
the guy who I'll, I'll, I'll pretty much call my mentor is um, Andreas Magnuson. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And even he was like, dude, it's a bad idea. Uh, but he still came out and helped me build my build my studio. So I it was like when I was 26, I built a room in my basement and I was just like really tenacious about learning. Like mm-hmm. and um, and the thing about producing bands is it's throwing you actively on, on the field where you have to get better at it. So right. it, it, it was more than anything. It was like a, it was really, really uh, addicting. You know, I actually do think that to a certain degree, I got an unhealthy um, workaholic addiction because Uh, every single time I produced one of these bands, I'd figure something out. I'd be like, oh, my God, I hear this. Like, I hear this. I have a really good story (laughs) about (laughs) when it would be like something simple. But any tiny little victory was like, I I don't know how to explain it other than like, I don't. It it. was emotional. You know, like all of a sudden, like. I would move an EQ knob. I'd be like, Oh my God, I fucking heard that. <laughs> like, As to where, when you first start, it's all just a haze of confusing shit. You don't right. know what's going on. So, um, so yeah, like that's why I took on so many projects was right. like, it was just like, well, if I don't take on all of these and, and get caught up with people like, you know, cause I, it's something I should have started doing when I was like 20. But, right, right, right. But gotcha. I didn't. I was. I was like, "I'll be a journalist." Like, I'm not gonna be a fucking journalist. I'm fucking paying people like <laughs> paying people in India like twenty cents a page to just oh, yeah. like copy art or, like articles for these like aggregate websites and shit like that. Sure. I wrote a book that got published. I was a ghostwriter. I wasn't mentioned anywhere on it. It's in real estate. Wow, it was a okay. fluff piece for some for some company that that helped people direct their Roth IRA investments in real estate. I was paid $500 for like three weeks of work. And I had to even, when I sent them all the texts, they were like, Hey, uh, we got to have like the page numbers and pictures and stuff. So we could send this to the, to the place to print. And it was like, I got to format the fucking thing. Wow. And I don't even know how to do that. So I had to go on Reddit and be like, Hey guys, anybody know how to format a textbook? (laughs) Right. (laughs) For five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Like, and at the time, that was a lot of money for me. And then, you know, it was like I started recording bands, and all of a sudden, I like was actually being paid, and it was like, oh my god, like, right. you know, I can't fuck this up. So right now, though, so where does your passion and love for music lie? Because I know you're big on controlling the material and the quality of the music. So are you happy right now? Are you more? Yeah, happy? I, I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm. Well. I got to be entertained. Like I prefer being out and performing for okay. people. And I'm trying to find a way to keep like integrating production in. Right. Um, my goal is that production is something I do a couple times a year because it is, it's brutal and it's demanding yeah. and it's like, you don't see the sun a lot. Right. Right. It's interesting, <laughs> but <laughs> at the end of the day, like, you know, the goal is I, I, I want to charge a little more, take on, fewer projects and um but i have i have like a bunch of bands i work with that are so cool and they're like so understanding about the tour thing and they actually kind of encourage it so it'll be like hey this is gonna bump our project back two months you know i don't give shit oh yeah (laughs) because they know that it's like once you know they're like go get some fans so so they hear this yeah no exactly and i mean that's what i was kind of getting at before the last time i saw you you were killing it on stage like the oh, amount, thanks. yeah, the amount that you're doing now. I haven't seen Hawk yet, so I am hoping to see you know that reincarnation live. But thanks. For, that's yeah. that's high praise. Oh no, absolutely. I mean, look, I love mileage. I think that track is great. So we'll Thank have you. to talk. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that in a little bit for sure. But that I think the point of you being on tour and enjoying yourself and really getting out there is also helping your name rec- You know, your name recognizability. There we go. Well, it's, it's so funny because like, that's like my least, like the least of my, well, I guess I am kind of concerned about it just in terms of like, what is best for the people around me. Right. You know, it's like, I find myself like actually what drives me to like, you know, do upkeep on my Instagram and things like that is not like my own recognition, but being like, well, you know, I do have people who are, I'm working with who like, you know, they deserve somebody that at least like cares a little bit and stuff sure. like that you know for, for me it's all like what is best for 
the people on my team. Right. And, uh, and that's something that really did push me into like, you know, like trying to get my band back to doing stuff and on yeah. tour. Cause like right. those guys, like they, they deserve to make money doing that stuff. Yeah. You know, they deserve to have that too. So working your ass off and going crazy on stage, it stops being cool at a, at least for people like me, it stops being cool when it's just for me. Sure. Like I wouldn't rehearse if, 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 if you were just like, Hey, if you do this, you could go on stage every day and people will cheer at you. <laughs> Am I going to rehearse a lot? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Right. It's like, yeah, that's cool. But once I went on tour with motionless and white, that changed everything. Cause oh, yeah. they had a ton of their friends on payroll. Yeah. And that changed my life because I was like, Oh my God, if I rehearse my ass off, I'll, I'll spend hundred. If I spend hundreds on lessons, if I, you know, do like whatever the fuck I can do to be a better performer. Yeah. I could hire Danden. Like I could hire my friends. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's, it's very strange. I I'm totally with you on that. And obviously you have a lot more experience, but that that's gotta be weird for you as well. You know, I consider you, and I think a lot of people do consider you a vet in the industry. So that's funny. <laughs> it is weird, that's right? Really but funny. but how how does it feel doing the whole rebranding thing? Um, it was a little scary, but like we decided to do it like four years ago. So right. like I already went through like a series of emotions on the whole entire thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so like by the time we had gotten to, um, by the time we had gotten to it, like I already cycled around to. Uh, I already cycled around to like apathy. Sure. <laughs> so, which I actually think is like a decent brand for us. There you go. <laughs> Cause like everything about our stuff is so like <laughs> deadpan and, 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 um, and we're very honest. Like yes. people are like, when's the record coming out? It's like, well, talking to a couple labels right now, but whenever somebody offers me a check, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like we're not like, you know, playing smoke and mirrors games. Um, no. we're, we're, we love like fucking internet meme, hip hop culture stuff. Like we, sure. you know, so, so like we have like a couple like pretty funny t-shirts we're printing for tour oh, right nice. now. And okay. like, you know, we, it, it but, um, so the rebranding thing, I, I guess I always sort of like, you know, Toto, Toto like got signed and was off doing stuff when I was 19. Right. And, and yeah. we probably would have changed the fucking name if, if we didn't have like a hundred shirts and different bins, you know what I mean? Cause it was like, <laughs> Oh shit, we just got a record deal. Right. And we're called this or the apocalypse. And it's like, you know, every time I meet a girl, I'm dating's mom. There was like, what is that again? This or the apocalypse, uh, the apocalypse. Yeah, sure. Sure. That's it. Sure. Sure. And I mean, and you know, I never really had a big, I never had, um, it was weird. Like I was always kind of like the head of the operations, right? but I, I was always like really, really ready to relinquish any decision-making on anything uh. for like branding or identity stuff or yeah. art. Just please tell me what the art's going to look like. And somebody like shows me something. Yeah, that's great. Gotcha. And it's great. And, and, and honestly, all of it was great, but yeah, I never really had too much of a grips on the identity. Uh, you know, I was, I was like young and just sort of like would randomly decide something was cool. Sure. And, and, you know, very, very frequently it's like, it's really funny what musicians do where they are always trying to deny reality. So it was oh, like, yeah. I, I kind of feel like we're more like defeater. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like looking back on it, no, this is the apocalypse was nothing like the, it was never right. anything remotely similar to the theater. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? And, 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 um, what I'm trying to say is it was a really good ex like this is the apocalypse taught me so much, but it's really cool to be able to start fresh with all the things I know with Hawk ah. and just be able to be like, no, that's not going to work. Right. Okay. Like, no, this is our market. <laughs> this is like what the, you know, and, 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 and there's something cool. Like, I don't know. I say a lot of things that I think sometimes bands I'm recording initially, I think there's always that one like bass player sitting in the back of the room being like, I can't believe some of the things this guy is saying, but like, okay. I don't, I don't believe in people's first idea. I don't think ah, what the shit. shit that pops in your head at first, it was, I don't think the universe gave it to you. I don't think the universe gives a fuck about you. <laughs> I want to hear your fucking sixth idea. I want to hear your seventh idea, ah. your eighth idea, because it's probably better. Gotcha. Um, I don't, when, when a band, sh I think the least cool thing a band can do is just show up to a video shoot being like, yeah, no, 
I guess we just go like set up and play. And it's like, <laughs> and people like that form this whole identity around doing the bare fucking minimum. Yes. And it drives me insane. Right. Be like, I don't know, man. Like I, I find myself arguing with singers who will be like, yeah, man, that's my, that's just the idea I hear in my head. And it'll be like, okay, well, have you written any hit songs yet? Right. Like they don't know what I'm getting at. And I'll be like, well, have you written anything that's popped off yet? And they'll be like, well, no, and I'll be like, okay, well then let's not do your first idea because that's all you've done so far. And it hasn't right. worked yet. And we're here to fucking make something that sells. And they think that, that I'm like, tar- if somebody thinks I'm tarnishing the art, it, it drives me insane because it's like, isn't it cooler to care more and to, to put more effort in yes, like isn't exactly. it cooler to research your demographic think about what they want or are you just here to jerk yourself off over how unique you are because that's exactly. actually kind of lame yeah you know what i mean like yep. to, to actually think about you know what a hawk fan is and what they would think is cool and you know it's like my so talking about mileage like i rewrote the vocals for that song like seven goddamn times my band wow. thought i was going crazy but i would listen to it and yeah it just wasn't done yet but yes i did make a lot of decisions based on what i thought would do well but it was done in love you yeah, know what i mean right. like i still spent probably like way more time than i should have on those vocals uh, and, yeah. you know I, I was getting coaching sessions and stuff and like but um i think that a big thing with with um what i've learned in music is you should care about literally everything like no you shouldn't have a marketing blurb that you're just like yeah i don't know I don't, it's just a marketing thing man like no you should <laughs> you should care about all the dialogue that comes out like what's your branding identity what kind of voice do you want with your fans and if anybody ever gives you this bullshit like you're just like oh well wow, that's you're just you're you're not even worried about the music no you should worry about the music yes. you should worry about the visuals the art the video you should make sure the video uh, is telling something you want to tell but also in a way that works like yep. it's so much more work to care about all those things exactly. and it's so funny how many pretentious little dickheads i meet <laughs> that think they're cooler than everybody because they've chosen to not care about most right. of the stuff you no, know what man, i mean you're absolutely right yeah, yeah. Look, that's why I think that's why you fit in so well with Ice Nine Kills because you know their branding is maybe the best that there is out there. Like well, you it, know, it's all Spencer, and, yeah. and the thing about it is, is he is actively, actively like thinking about that band all the time. Like every, you know, like when that that Christmas, did you see the shit with the, like the Christmas song, like oh, the yeah. video game shit? Absolutely, yeah. Dude, he read me that he wrote the whole script for all of the promotional stuff, and he read it to me in the van, in the bus, you know, wow. being like, "But get this, all right." So it says this and this and this. Pause <laughs> with the blah 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 blah. And then he hired a voice actor, had yep. him do it, made sure it was exactly how he imagined it. Like this stuff takes work. Yes. It's not, and I'm not trying to say like, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> Nobody knows how hard it is to make. Like, no, nothing like that. It's fun work, but right. it's surprising, dude. When I'm wor- I work with so many bands. I love the bands I work with. Like, I'm I'm lucky. I like Carousel Kings, Wither yeah. Way, and Okian. Like, I'm working on this band, Monument of Memory, yeah. uh, fucking Gladiators, all, all these Concrete Dream. Oh, all shit. these bands really do care. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not. It, it, they 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 all are like. I get spoiled because they're like willing to put so much work into what they do. Sure. But you know, it's, it's surprising where, where like, you know, you, you meet so many musicians who will be like, they'll, they'll have a music video coming up. They've got like thousands of dollars on the line and it'll be like, so what are you doing for the video? And you like the fucking, uh, I, I don't know. Like, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, blah, blah, blah had an idea. Uh, and, and it was like, wait, <laughs> you're gonna spend a couple grand on, I don't know. Ridiculous. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, yeah what is your end goal and in the end like i think the thing about it is it's more of a self-esteem thing like nobody wants to try and create like a vision for something you know what i mean and 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 for me it's scary you know what i mean because at the end of the day the more control you take on something the more at fault you can be and i'm not trying to and and i i don't mean to talk about everything in terms of me because my band has a huge hand in it it's just way easier for me to say oh yeah when it like me but yeah no like jack bernie and adam Adam, yeah like all of us like adam is super active on like ideas and i frequently 
I'm always like, you know, with their ideas, I'll be like, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure. it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's work for everybody, you know? Yeah. I mean, you look at the song mileage and then you look at the music video for that and I'm sure you can interpret lyrics a whole different ways. When I listened to it, it sounded like a perfect you guys song, you know, a perfect Hawk song because Thanks. it almost felt like you guys are a little jaded You've gone through so much in your careers, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And then you look at the music video and there's an idea. There are multiple ideas there that are all mixed together so well. But you notice how, you know, you're not putting in that like, oh, man, we're just a new band who's rocking out, who's really enjoying this. The point of that track is to show that there's not always that. So in the music video, you're showing that as well with how you're, you know, you're mouthing the words to the even the screaming parts. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I well part of that is like man it's always really cringy when, when for me like trying to like you know when like people are like, trying to like hold me back i'm screaming in the music <laughs> video it's like you gotta have the right you gotta have the right like scene for that to make any sense and sure. i was um i did uh so I just want listeners to know, I don't think very highly of myself or anything like that. I just, I put, I, 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 I think like everything should take a lot of work. So I hope I didn't give any impression where it's like, my ideas are great. Cause like, I'm man, I, I am so no, no. critical of, of, of my own, you know, am I, am I swallowing too much of my own shit here? But, um, <laughs> when, um, with, uh, the music video, yeah, what I, I did was, um, I sat down for like, a whole day and i just watched all these different videos that i liked yeah and a lot of them are hip-hop videos and i like took ah, notes okay. and you know we we had to accept i my original vision for the for the music video was like way different i wanted to do a single shot thing that we, we were gonna all rehearse like a band rehearsal and sure. like and, and it, it just was like as i was like trying to work it all out i was like man we're going to fuck this up. (laughs) So, you know, I kind of like went back and it was like, well, we have a low budget. What can we do? And, um, and I got the idea of working with Chevy who, uh, she does all the special effects and makeup shit for Iceland kills. Right. And, um, and, and that girl, like, dude, she is a fucking G, you know what I mean? Like she just, she was any gig that I've seen her take on. She, she's like taking notes, getting visuals together, you know, doing practice runs. So I kind of shot this idea. Um, to the band where i was like hey i want to do uh, and, and this was from our manager too i was like i want to do no performance um which we end up did get like we needed some b-roll so we got some shots of everybody performing on the couch sure but yeah. um which jack was so happy about that <laughs> but uh i was like i want to do no performance uh because john suggested that i think that's great and um i want the tone of the video to be unlike uh, any heavy music videos that are out right now where like, you know, I, w- I want it to be, um, I want the tone to be kind of mellow. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I had the story that I wrote out. So I, I do Eric, our video guy yeah. in, in so many positive and uplifting words. I know I stress the fuck out of that guy. Cause <laughs> I sent for, I sent a Google drive document cause Google keep was like, Hey, this document's too long. Yeah, so yeah. I had to move over to Google drive. Um, <laughs> I have a 14 page document. I marked down all the cuts where, cause wow. it was like a low budget music video. So yeah. I'm not going to be the guy that shows up unprepared. So right. exactly. I, <laughs> I write down like every cut that I want down to the millisecond be like, all right, camera's going to go back to this person. Then back here, I want this, wow. I want this. And so the, like I wrote a whole story and you know, I think it's funny that like, I really thought we were going to get some flack over that music video being total nonsense and people actually like it, which I think is weird because it's like, it's so, it's so out there, but I basically wanted to, um, you know, uh, one thing that, that, that's pretty prevalent in, in my life. And, you know, uh, some people close to me is I've, I've grown up around a lot of mental illness and I don't, and, and I, I just really don't like how, um, I don't like this whole like wounded bird shit that everybody does where oh, it'll be you. like, if you're suffering from mental illness, you could come talk to one of us. They're like, no, you can't talk to a band member about it. talk to a fucking pro. Right. Like, no, right. like when you actually uh, grow up ar- around uh, people who, who deal with like some stuff that's painful, like it's annoying more than anything else. It's like, I've it's dealt like, with, you're, I you're, yeah. but it's like terrifying at the yeah. same time oh, because yeah, it's like, sure. 
it, it, it takes, it has stolen like years of time between me and people I'm close with who, mm. you know, like all of a sudden deal with, um, you know, I've, I've one of the closest people I've ever been to in my whole life, uh, has dealt with a problem where like, you know, somebody she's really close to is suddenly her enemy out of nowhere. And then like, you know, this is something that in, you know, her part of hearts, she believes. And, uh, and you know, so dealing with shit like that's scary because it's like, Oh, I, I wanted to spend more years, you know, happy, like happy around that person, but I didn't get to. And so it's like the, so I wanted to tell a story that like kind of related to somebody in their thirties who I'm not like putting my hands on my knees and looking down at a little kid being like, Oh buddy, if you need help, you can come talk to one. Of-. Like, no, that's not how people with issues should be spoken to. Like right. we're, we, uh, you know, and that's a big thing with metal core. And I think that ice nine kills should be totally commended for. And I, I want to follow I want to follow what, what they're doing with this. They don't treat their fans like they're little kids. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. They, they make stuff that, that, that's fun for even 30 year olds. Sure. So um, I think that's really important for our genre is to like, is to actually treat people like they're fucking adults, yes. you know, cause, cause what do you, what are you going to do when you're just, you know, making everything that's like melodramatic, you know, right. like fucking little postcard and, and, and telling people like you care about them when you don't, you know, you're, you're leaving town. Like you're not right. a bunch of, psychological professionals and stuff so i i i brought so basically i brought all these ideas to the band fortunately they were all very supportive they're like yeah. yeah let's do it and um and 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 i hope it showed in the music video but i think so. i think a lot of people are just like this is ridiculous no no there's way more to it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is fine I mean, that's cool too well then let's round things up here a little bit and talk about obviously you said you have, you know, a lot of music done for Hawk, you know, you're ready to get rid of it, like, quote unquote, get rid of it, if you find the right label. But what is the style going to be? Is it going to be more like Tota? Is it going to be because obviously mileage has the most clean vocals you probably ever yeah, done. My, as of right now, mileage has the most singing we've ever done on a song. Right. Um, I think we're having some fun with it. But um, I, I do just between you and me, like, me and Jack have like been talking, we're like, Oh, this next one's got to be heavy as fuck. Ah, okay. You know what I mean? All so right. I, I don't think, I think the thing about Hawk that people need to understand is like, it's so funny. Like every now and then we've gotten a couple, like literally when I say a couple, like I've, I've seen like maybe 10 posts of people who are like, I miss the old Tota sound. And it's so funny because listen to any of those records they don't sound remotely similar to one another all of them are different you have four albums that are completely different from each other so different and and the reason was we didn't know what the fuck we were doing we just (laughs) went in with a producer and a bunch of demos and whatever happened happened and then we left yeah if somebody would have been like oh let's write another album that sounds like halt what's left we would (laughs) have failed at it we didn't know how to do it again the one-time thing and so it I imagine Hawk is going to just keep using that because I like, I feel comfortable enough putting out something that's like, I I feel comfortable enough putting out something that's very heavy or very in the vein of like, you know, some of the more like artsy rappy political things. Okay. Or we could put out a fucking pop song if we wanted to. I, I, you know, the the one thing that like when you're not really beholden to anything Mm -hmm. is kind of like, you know, if people are upset about it, it'd be like, dude, it's a fucking song. We'll right. put out more. We don't <laughs> have to like, I think there's this weird thing where people think when you release something, it's like, oh, now it's going to start going this way and you got to right. defend it. But, but, um, I don't get that. Cause it's like, it makes sense. Like ice nine kills. They, um, they had two simultaneous singles that were doing really well. American Nightmare or, yep. or was doing really well while Grave Mistake was doing really well on Sirius XFM. Sure. Their fans should be stoked that Grave yep. Mistake did well on the radio, but they should also be stoked that the other single did really well because it's going to make the band continue making both products. You know exactly. what I mean? Right. Like these songs are at the end of the day, a product that we're making, and, you know, if mileage did really well. So yeah, we're probably going to do more catchy stuff like that because sure. we're not going to, not make you know it's like when you're making things for your your fans 
you're going to try to entertain them, but a lot of people do want some old Toda shit. So yeah, we, I mean, we gotta, <laughs> if we, if we want to keep those fans, you know? Right. Sure. No, that's a very interesting way to look at it, but it makes complete sense. It really does. Well, I mean, like you can only love a song for so long. <laughs> we got to play the fucking thing every day. I mean, like, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I just, I'm not like, it seems so narcissistic to like put your own tastes on a pedestal, be like, I only do this. I'm a this. <laughs> it just, after producing so much different music, it just changes your chemistry. And now I see that as narcissistic when people are like putting lines in the sand and stuff, because it's just like, how do you, how are you the same person today that you are tomorrow? Like, sure. I, I, you know, I, I find myself, I'll love an album one day and I just can't stand it the next day. Like I, I change so frequently, you know? Gotcha. No, for sure. But, uh, but yeah, that's a fun conversation. Sorry if I talked a lot. No, no, no. Actually, I, I was just about to say, well, Ricky, I think that's a perfect place to end. Like I said, I'm a big fan of yours, obviously Tota and then also Hawk and obviously of Ice Nine Kills as well. So I will probably see you live on the episode three tour. That is my cool. hope. This will probably be out after this tour with Ice Nine Kills is done, but I hope everyone is able to go to episode three and then obviously keep in touch with you, you know, and everything Hawk is doing. But until then, what's the best way to support you guys? Um, Just keep, uh, just mute your computer and and loop the song (laughs) on Spotify and YouTube over and over for me. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think we got a online store. Yeah. Um, you know, chances are if this podcast is coming out later, uh, we are doing a physical release of oh, uh, mileage. Okay. Um, and we're planning on releasing another thing, but uh, yeah, there'll, there'll probably be information about that. But yeah, web store. Like, if you want to support a band, just fucking buy stuff from their web store. That's like pot. That's just money in their pocket immediately. Right. Yep. We'll have links in the description of the episode so that people can do that for sure. So, Ricky, Thank I know. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. I know we have been working on getting this done for so long. Shout out to Rick Emery. Absolutely. I'm, I'm very Shout glad his name Rick was Emery. Said. Yes. Shout out to Rick. And yeah, man, thank you so much because this was, as expected, a lot of fun. So, once again, thank Good. you so much, man. Yeah. Thanks for letting me talk. I'll talk to you soon. You've been listening to Scene Daddy Interviews. Thank you all for listening to Scene Daddy Interviews. Make sure you support the artists we featured by checking out the summary of the episode. Also, for all your scene news, reviews, and memes, make sure to follow Scene Daddy and Ian Hates on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe and rate Scene Daddy interviews on your favorite podcast listening app for more great artist interviews in the future. Stay seen.